Hey guys, it's Hidden Road BHA here bringing you a new video. Uh, so I'm a little late on getting this video out. I really wanted to get it out uh, last week. Uh, but basically, um, I don't know if you guys saw, with the latest release uh, of Home Assistant 0.117, there's all kinds of cool stuff. But one of the main things that I wanted to bring up or talk about is the Xbox uh, sensor. So they finally have a an actual Xbox integration for Home Assistant. We don't have to use a custom integration anymore. It's all built in. We can pull it down from the integrations tab and everything. Uh, so this is definitely a step up. and I'm super excited about it, especially if you saw the cool stuff um, that they had listed here in the video they showed and everything and all that it could do. I definitely want to check it out. Here we go. All right, so it looks like this install is going to be super simple. There's not a whole lot that we have to do uh, other than just kind of go through the uh, adding of the integration from the web interface. Um, I don't see any prerequisites or anything like that that will need to be added, so this should be a pretty quick video, I think, overall. So let's do a quick run-through of everything we're going to cover. We're going to install the integration uh, from the web interface there. Once we do that, then of course we are going to get it added into Loveless with this uh, cool picture elements card and stuff. I'm going to tweak it just a little bit uh, from what they have there, not a whole lot, uh, but we're going to run through and take a look at that. And then of course, lastly, we'll kind of see it in action, just kind of walk through uh, some of the settings and some of the stuff that you can do. Let's get started. All right, so as I said before, this setup is gonna be pretty simple. And as you can see here, everything for this uh, integration installation will be handled uh, right there in the web browser because you're linking your Home Assistant server uh, to your Xbox Live account. And so that's kind of how that works. It's not directly to the Xbox itself because the Xbox uh, is already linked to your uh, Xbox Live account as well. So basically, we're going to go into integrations in the web interface here. We'll hit the plus down in the corner. Search for uh, Xbox. Uh, here it is. And again, it sends you straight up to Xbox Live to log in with your Xbox Live username and password. And of course, it'll ask you if you're okay with everything you are uh, linking together between Home Assistant and Xbox. Once you say okay, then you're pretty much done. And at that point, you can close that window and jump back over to Home Assistant. And as you can see here, it'll pull in all the devices that are associated with your uh, Xbox Live account. Now, really, we only have one Xbox, but for some odd reason, it's kind of pulled in multiple items. I'm not really sure about what the other ones are, but we can pretty much disable everything else. The only thing we really care about is going to be the Xbox that uh, I use at my house. And, of course, uh, my son's gamer tag, just so we kind of have that sensor in there. It looks like, by default, a lot of the other stuff is disabled. But that's basically it. As you can see, we've linked the accounts together. We now have a media player set up for the Xbox One as well as a remote, uh, which will allow us to do some controls and stuff like that. So pretty cool. Let's go ahead and jump over to the next step and see what it'll take to add the uh, Loveless card and controls and stuff into the web interface. All right, so I want to get the uh, Xbox and stuff added into the web front end. And uh, I don't know if you saw in the documentation, but there's a pretty cool looking uh, Loveless card taking advantage of like picture element card uh, that basically looks like a little Xbox controller and stuff. And so I thought it'd be cool to get all that added into Home Assistant and just kind of walk through that. Um, we're going to tweak it just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to add it into a 
vertical uh, stat card because I want to also have the media player uh, in there as well as like the gamer tag sensor and everything. What I have here is the uh, media player and then the levels card that I was just talking about and then the gamer tag there at the bottom. And of course, I'll have all that in the description below uh, so that you can copy what I did and paste it. Uh, but basically, it's pretty easy to set up, especially since you can do it all from Loveless. So basically, in the stack, I got three things. I have the media player, the picture element with all of the controller images and stuff, and then, of course, the, the gamer tag sensor there at the bottom. Uh, but it's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, it looks really slick. Basically, it looks like an Xbox controller, and then, of course, we'll be able to uh, control it with all those buttons and everything. So uh, let's jump on to that last step and kind of see it in action. The one thing that you need to make sure that you do uh, when you're adding it or copying it, even from my uh, configuration or the config on the documentation, is if your Xbox has a different name or something uh, whenever it was first added into Home Assistant, uh, I think like mine because it, it pulled in like multiple Xboxes. Uh, mine had this like the number two at the end of it or something like that. Um, so whatever the name of your Xbox is, when it comes in under media player uh, dot whatever, you'll have to update the Loveless uh, configuration to match that uh, that media player. Here on the left, of course, is uh, it's pointed at my Xbox screen. On the right, of course, is Home Assistant. And let's just kind of monkey around with some of the controls a little bit just to show you that you, uh, you can move it around. It's actually pretty responsive. I'm moving it up and down and around with the arrow keys, and it seems to be working pretty well. I like that. Um, some other cool features that I thought were pretty neat were if you hit the... Uh, little button here on the media player you can go to installed applications and of course so uh, look I can just hit Netflix right here and boom Netflix starts up uh, right there on the Xbox so that's pretty neat we can create automations and stuff with that um, you know and even have Alexa turn it on if you want to so that, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with that and it's pretty responsive, you know, it's actually pretty quick. Uh, so if I go over here and I hit um, Plex here, let's see. And again, I mean, it's almost instant that it pops up. So that is uh, very nice. I like that a lot. Another cool feature that uh, I found here with this new integration, um, it doesn't do anything specific for uh, the Xbox itself. But if you go down to Media Browser, you can now view like any kind of saved content you have from your Xbox. All right, so let's uh, let's click on one of these here. It's Fortnite. We're gonna click on one of these screenshots. And this is from the web interface in Home Assistant. I'm looking at a screenshot that is saved on the Xbox. That's pretty cool. I mean, I, I know that's not a super big deal, but to me, I mean, just the whole combination of everything together really brings this Xbox integration uh, and makes it look real nice and clean. I really like that. But that's pretty much the end of the video, guys. Uh, like I said, uh, if you haven't upgraded to uh, 0.117 yet, definitely need to check that out so that you can look at all the new stuff that they have uh, added since that update. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So, of course, for starters, uh, we installed the Xbox integration uh, in Home Assistant. It was a pretty easy install. From there, we um, added it to the web front end so we could kind of see what that looks like, taking advantage of that cool uh, Loveless card that they had created. And then, of course, lastly, I just showed you what that looked like in action. So that's it, guys. As always, I want to thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me A Coffee link. Every little bit helps. If you haven't had a chance, uh, jump over to Teespring and check out my Burns Home Automation merchandise page with all the uh, BHA merchandise. 
And again, IP Vanish, if you're still looking for VPN service, check out IP Vanish. They do it very well. And there are links for all this in the description below. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around.